Jesus said in the last days, men's hearts will fail them for fear of those things which are coming upon the earth. There will be great earthquakes, famines and fearful sights, with the sea and waves roaring. What will you do to prepare for this increase of evil? In his book, The Truth Concerning the Great Tribulation, Stephen Fraser reveals God's great escape plan for those living in the last days. To order your copy for only $10.95, call 888-542-2555 or order online at lofbc.org. Hello, I'm Stephen Fraser. Welcome to the Living the Life broadcast. This week, I am talking about idolatry, how to live free of idolatry. You know, when God created man in the very beginning, he created him to have absolute rule and authority over the creation. That the creation wasn't to rule mankind. And the way that was to work was God was to rule in our hearts. Well, thank God through Jesus Christ, God once again can rule in our hearts so that the creation doesn't rule over us. I'm telling you, only one thing is truly, eternally needed, and it's Jesus. It's the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the Godhead. It's the Holy Spirit. We absolutely need Him. He is a necessity every day, every waking moment of our life. We've got to have God. And there's nothing above Him. There's nothing greater than Him. Nothing more important than him. And not only is nothing more important than him, there is nothing more exciting than him. You know, I grew up in a home, you know, with my parents. I, I, never, I, had never really, I don't remember really ever seeing them fight. There was just one time that my, uh, they had something going on. I don't even know what it was. It was done very quietly, like two, two little mice. They had some kind of spat going on, and my mom just quietly went in the room and closed the door. And dad disappeared in another room. So I'm running around the house playing, doing my thing, and I walked right into the living room where, you know, my dad was. And I walked into there, I walk in there, and, and, and he's in the dark, and he's crying. I said, what's going on? And he said, well, you, your mom and I have, you know, I don't know, he said, had a disagreement or something like that. I was like, whoa. I mean, that was big for me, you know. And that, that's about as bad as it got from my perspective growing up. But, you know, I watched them, you know, and as I got older, I started recognizing some things, you know. I, I mean, there was one day we were running around trying to get things ready. We're all in a rush. It's like, it's almost, but whatever it was, five o'clock, we've got to get there. We've got to hurry. So we're all running around. We're getting dressed, doing our thing and everything else. And Dad's still not home. Come on, Dad, let's go. We're going to be late. We're all going to be late. And so even Mom, you know, she, she looked like Martha there for a little while. You know, she's running around trying to make things happen. And then Dad walked in the door. And he walked in the door, and I remember I was upstairs, and I, I, I came around the corner. You know, I'm moving and shaking. And, 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 and there's Mom sitting on the stair at the bottom, and Dad's telling her all about her, his day. I mean, I'm just watching him. And, and, and watching the two of them. And, he, you know, Dad, sometimes he likes to take the long way when he tells a story. And <laughs> he'll, he wants to share the day, you know. So you want to hear about my day, honey? Oh, yes. So next thing you know, you know, he, she's... He's given, you know, the whole day. Well, what happened was I had two people come into work. And I, and, I, and I stopped at the top of the stairs. I saw this happening. And I got a revelation. I realized the whole world stopped. Everything that was so important that needed to be done stopped in her world when he walked in that door. And I realized she had her priorities straight. As important as all these things were, he was more important. And you know, they had it straight too, that they, their relationship with each other was more important than even the kids. How do you know? They came first. What came first, the chicken or the egg? The, the little chicklings came last. And the best thing mom and dad can do for the kids is love each other. That's the best thing they could do for their kids. And so, you know, they were, uh, you know, they did that as we, as we grew up. They loved each other. 
They took care of each other. And, and, you know, there were times, you know, it was bedtime. We were going to bed because they were going to have some time alone. That was their attitude. You're going to bed. You're not going to stay up because they were going to have time. Well, see, that's just having your priorities. That's why they had a good marriage. They had a good marriage. Uh, you know, and, and so, you know, it's the same thing for us today. Many times we're abusing one another and, and speaking ill of each other and just because of all these other things that are so important to us. And meanwhile, it's like, wait a second. What's more important here? This bill getting paid? This situation being cleared up? Things come and go. That marriage is supposed to last a lifetime. Put it first. Hello, somebody. Amen. I'm working so hard, I don't have time for these kids. You need to take time for your kids. Get your priorities straight. And above all that, God. My world stops for Jesus. That's got to be our attitude. My world stops for Jesus. Why don't you just look up to heaven and just declare it right now. By faith, just say, my world stops for Jesus. Whatever he wants. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Whatever you want. I put you first place. I move you to the front. You're number one. And so, you know, there are other things. We want to get all these other things done. They're very important. But you're number one. And man, if we would keep our priorities straight, there'd be a whole lot of things working a whole lot better for folks. Why? Because Satan would have to keep his dirty, filthy hands off. I said Satan would have to keep his dirty, filthy hands off. But you can see the fingerprints of Satan all over so many people in the church world. So many Christians. I mean, Satan's fingerprints are all over them. A lot of those you can't even tell. Are they saved? They were saved. I think they were saved. I mean, answered an altar call. Well, they were saved. I know they were saved because it, it really shouldn't be that difficult. We should be walking around just, that's why I, I love Tim Tebow. I mean, the man comes out and he bows his knee and he gives God honor and he puts God first and, and people are just, people are just, people are just mesmerized by it. People are just amazed. Like, well, he, they're Tebowing. No, they're, he's acknowledging God. He's honoring God. Could you imagine? Why are you doing that? What is it you're doing that for? Ah, uh, because I love Jesus. It's like, hello? Is this really that hard? Even Christians are amazed. Wow! Can you believe he did that? What, you don't? We need to bow the knee, man. God, you're number one. Hey, this football game's great, but God, Jesus. This job, you know, it's great, but Jesus. This dinner, great, but Jesus. You know, you go through the Word of God and you see how many people have forfeited so much over a meal. Over a meal. I mean, it starts at the very beginning. Adam and Eve. Boy, that fruit sure, sure looks good. Ooh, it looks desirable to eat. Yeah. And they got so caught up with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They got so caught up, they got so mesmerized. And Satan just is, keeps talking to them about the tree. Look at the tree. And they just, and they completely lost sight of God. And they went ahead and took a piece of fruit above God. And what happened? Satan got his hands all over them. All over God's plan. All over God's earth. And he's been choking the life out of it ever since. And it's time for the redeemed of the Lord, who once had all these dumb idols, all these things they esteem so high, but now they've been redeemed. Now they've been born again. Now they've been given a new life. It's time for them to rise up, praise God. Put away those things and not go back to those things and turn to him with all the heart and begin to bring life back into the earth and take Satan's hands off the creation. Take your hands off 
my family. Take your hands off my neighbors. Take your hands off. Take your hands off. Take your hands off. Take your hands off my nation. Adam in the beginning, I mean, he just let Satan come and put his fingers all over everything. Because they got into idolatry. Idolatry opened the door for the devil. Behind every idol is a demon. Now, this, this should put the fear of God in us. We need to understand this. Behind every idol is a demon. Demons are behind idols. You go ahead and put something above God, and you've just given place to the devil to come in and touch you. Touch your finances. Touch your, touch your mind. Touch your thoughts. Touch your body. Touch your family. Touch your kids. Touch this. Touch that. It's time to tell the devil, tell the devil you can't touch this. Because Jesus is my Lord, and I'll have no other gods before me. I know who number one is, and I'm not going to be hoodwinked and schnookered into following some dumb thing, because it's a dumb thing. I said it's a dumb thing. In comparison to him, it's a dumb thing. And you might like it. You might enjoy it. There's all kinds of things we like to do. There's all kinds of places we like to go. There's all kinds of people we like to be around. There's all kinds of things. And they're nice and they're fun. And the Bible says God has given us all things freely to enjoy. There are things that are just full of enjoyment. But they're dumb apart from him. It is stupid, in other words. More modern English. It is stupid to put anything above him or to just get in totally consumed by something where God disappears out of the picture. And now we have to have that thing. And we have to watch ourselves all the time. All of us. What we eat, what we drink. I'm not going to let anything control me. Anything that controls you is an idol. I said anything that controls you is an idol. It's controlling your emotions. It's controlling your peace. It's controlling your joy. It's controlling where you go, where you don't go, what you do, when you can do what you want to do. It's controlling you. Whatever's controlling you is an idol, and it's got demonic powers behind it. Just like that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's just a tree of knowledge of good and evil. The problem was the demon that was standing there by the tree. The problem was not the knowledge of good and evil. It was the demon that came in and took authority over mankind when they ate of the tree. So they turned the tree into an idol, and Satan took control. He took control of their lives. And suddenly they became slaves to Satan, became slaves to sin. Well, thank God Jesus came, broke the power of Satan over our life. Woo! Glory to God. Friend, you're not just forgiven. You're a new creation. You've been given the power of God. You've been recreated in Christ Jesus with the power of God to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall dominate you. You're the boss under the big boss. He the big boss, you the little boss. But devil, no boss. No boss, devil. You don't boss us around. We're not under your sway. You're not pushing us around. You don't call the shots around here. Creation ain't pushing us around because we ain't serving it. You serve the creation, it will push you around. We got to watch ourselves. You got to watch where your affections are going. I mean, there's been times where I really like this drink. I really like, I really like this food. And next thing you know, whoa, it's time to fast. It's time to put that thing away. Time to give that thing a break. And there's been plenty of things I've just fasted permanently. There's things that I saw, you know, in my early woke up when I first got saved. You know, the first thing I did, I mean, it was a habit, you know. I, I, you know, you had to have the TV going. I, and I'd have the TV going. But, you know, I saw it had control over me. I pulled the plug on it. And I kept the plug out for quite some time until I got over it. And now I control it. You have a TV in your house? Yes, but it don't control me. At all. Trust me. But see, people, I mean, they just, you know, they have to have their TV. They have to have their entertainment. Of course, today now, you know, we've got, uh, you know, the Internet. And folks are just, they're just, they're just consumed in it. You just, you, they're just addicted to it. They're addicted to their email. They're addicted to their Facebook. They're addicted. They're addicted. It's all good things until you're addicted to it, until it controls you, until there's no Jesus there. Well, I love talking about Jesus in my Facebook. Okay, that's nice too. But just like ministry, you could put all those things above God. 
I love to preach. I love to preach. I don't love to preach. I love God. He made me a preacher. If he wants me to go be a plumber, I'll go be a plumber. I wouldn't be a good one, but I'll give my, I'll give my best shot, Lord. <laughs> I'd really need grace for that. <laughs> so you got to watch about falling in love with things. Now you have to have it. I have to have it. I have to have a big ministry. I don't have to have nothing. Just give me one old little snaggletooth woman that loves Jesus sitting out there, and I'll preach to her. I'll preach her wig off. I'll preach her wig right off, praise God. <laughs> we have to have, we have to have. I got everything I need. Come on, somebody. I know what I have to have. Got to have him. I said, we got to watch ourselves, you know. You get into these little hobbies, and you get into little sports, and you get into different things, and next thing you know, it's it. I mean, somebody just mentions, mentions it and sensations run through your bloodstream. You get cold chills. Yes, when can we do it again? Watch yourself. <laughs> Have you know what I'm talking about? Two people know what I'm talking about? I don't think so. Don't you look at me like that, you pious thing. You get real with me right now. Nobody's getting out of here until you get real. I'll tell you that right now. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But we got to watch it. Ooh, that's getting too big. Ooh, I'm, why, ooh, I'm excited about that. Ooh, that's a little bit too much excitement. Jesus? Maybe I need to praise God a little bit. It need to be a good time to have a little, a little praise and worship time. We see something getting a, little bit, getting a little bit too much of us. It's a good time to start praising him. Woo, glory to God. We praise you and lift our voice to you. Stir ourselves up concerning him. Amen. I mean, I think we need to be passionate in, in everything we do in life. The Bible tells us to be passionate about things in life. You know, it says, whatever you do, do with all your might. Whatever you put your hands to. Whatever you put your hands to, do with all your might. Get into it. Stop being half-hearted. Love and be passionate and work and do it. But just... Do him. Be passionate for him. Love him through it. And let him always be your motivation. Let him always be the desired end, not just the thing. Come on, somebody. Let him be the desired end in everything. We need to lift him up above everything. Can you say amen? amen. Because as we talked about last time, again, demons get, get in through idols. But notice here, First John. I'm going to read it again, verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. Now watch, he's not done. We know that we are of God, and that the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. That's how he closes it out. Keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Now notice, if you go back to verse 18, he says... We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. Whoever is born of God keeps himself. You should underline. Keeps himself. We need to keep ourselves. And then what? Satan won't be able to touch us. The wicked one touches us not. Isn't that right? Because we keep ourselves. Well, what are we keeping ourselves from? Verse 21. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. So we keep ourselves... And the wicked one touches us not. Well, what are we keeping ourselves from? Idols. Keeping ourselves from having anything over us that's greater than him in our mind, in our emotions. Amen. Friend, we've been redeemed from idolatry. We've been brought out of that mess. Our eyes have been opened. We understand the world. 
They're walking in darkness. They think, man, they think this is great. They got to have this and they got to drink this and you got to do this. I mean, that's their life. They're lost. But our eyes have been open to him, to life. And we realize, whoa, Jesus is not just some little religious figure. He is not a little supplement to my life and my success. Jesus isn't just some little rabbit's foot that I, I hang around my neck or I go to and chant to uh, uh, before I go to bed at night so that I get everything I want. No, no, no. My eyes have been open and I understand He is alive. He is Lord. He is life. He is it. Now, if your eyes weren't opened like that, today's the day for you to get saved. We're not asking you to get religion. We're asking you to get saved. A lot of folks are in the church, and you, you, don't, you don't know. You think they're saved, and they're idolaters. They serve dumb idols. They're not saved. But they go to church. They clean themselves up. But they're idolaters. They don't have the revelation. He's it. He's it. But I know God is penetrating darkness today through the preaching of the gospel, and he's getting in there, and he's ripping veils off, and there's some folks going, whoa! We're not talking religion here. We're not talking being churchy. We're talking about the Christ, the Son of the living God. We're talking about the Redeemer. We're talking about Jesus. He is Lord of all. Today's your day to make him the Lord of your life. Confess that with your mouth and say, I'll have no other gods before me. Let's stand on our feet. We need to make Jesus the Lord of our life. And for those that have made him the Lord of your life, but there's all kinds of things that have come in and have dominated your life, dominated your world. They've lifted themselves up above God, Jesus, to the point where Jesus, it's so vague. And when it comes time to praise God, it's like, I don't got it. It's time to get that changed today. You're backslidden. That's not condemning. That's an eye opener to get you out of that mess. How many want Satan's hands off your life? Come on. This is life or death. You don't want the devil touching you. You don't want to be a partaker of demons. You don't want to be in fellowship with devils. Come on, somebody. You don't want the devil to have an ounce of authority in your life. Then you've got to recognize that I can't have any other gods. I don't want any other gods before. Because no matter how good it all is, if I serve it and it becomes my master, it's going to be cruel to me. It's going to become a cruel master. Did you get that? If it's fun and sight is good, great. But if it's your master, if it's mastering you, if it's dominating you, so you can't even be nice to your family over it, it's dominating you, so you don't have time for God anymore. If that's the case, then it's idolatry. And it will be a cruel master. It'll go from fun to a very sad ending. Are you listening to me? Because Satan's objective is to not stop until he destroys your life. Thank God he's not going to destroy our life because we're going to say no way. And God's so patient. You know, there's been things, you know, when I got saved, there were things, you know, and, and, and even afterwards, you know, there were things that got in and got bigger to me than him and I recognized it. But oh, thank God he's right there to forgive me, cleanse me, wash me, and put me back on top of that thing. You're to be on top of that thing. You're to be its master. It's not to master you. Hallelujah. You've been called to rule and reign in life. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shout, I'm going to rule. I'm going to reign. And the devil is not going to dominate my soul, my mind, my body, my life, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say this together. Say, Lord Jesus, you be the Lord of my life. I repent for having anything 
above you. I recognize today that you are the way, the only way, the only thing that I need, absolutely can't live without in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Be my ruler, be my Lord, and help me to lay aside weights, and sins, and snares, and follow you without restraint, unrestricted, in perfect liberty. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You know, it's an amazing thing how addictive things can become to us. It's amazing how people can be addicted to everything from eating to relationships to entertainment to hobbies to just about anything. And the reason is because there are evil spirits that are working behind the scenes, behind the creation, that are trying to compel mankind to worship the creation, to set the creation above God. And so we're learning in this series how to rule over things and not be ruled by them. That is so important to learn how to live a life that's free of idolatry. When we have no idols in our life, where we lift nothing up above God in our life, then the devil has no place in our life. And so this is a very important subject, something we really have to pay special attention to and get our faith built up so we can go through this life living in perfect victory. To help you do it, I've put together a three CD teaching series called Living Free of Idolatry. And I encourage you to contact our ministry by going to our website at lofbc.org or you could call the number on the screen and contact us so that we can ship this out to you and you can just listen to this teaching. Uh, you know, when you receive CDs from us, they're unedited. And so you're able to get a whole lot more on the subject that I'm teaching than you get in the broadcast because, you know, we only have a limited amount of time for our broadcast, so we have to edit some things out. So, but when you get the CD, you get the entire teaching. So I encourage you to contact our ministry and allow us to get in your hands living free of idolatry so that you can enjoy the victory that God has for you through Jesus Christ. For a CD or DVD of today's message, write to us at Life of Faith Bible Church, 14200 Spiegel Lane, Louisville, Kentucky, 40299. Or call 1-888-542-2555. You can also visit us online at lofbc.org. The Living the Life broadcast is sponsored by the faithful financial gifts of its viewers.